Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Uh, if you are expecting, congratulations. Mm -hmm. We have some resources for you. Brittany Bagnell's at Uville today. You'll find one location at 33 Mary, another one in St. Patel. And Britt, we want to talk about the, the one question first time moms seem to have a lot of questions about, which is the Ooh. pain. How much pain. does it hurt? Exactly. So we're talking about the options out there. Of course, there is regular childbirth where it's just oh natural. You uh, you do you just do it how you like it. But there are options as well when you check into the hospital that you want to discuss with it. Maybe uh, the people in your prenatal class or with your doctor leading up to it. The thing is, you can't plan for what the, the birth is going to be like, but you can right. plan for your options. And a lot of the options actually you can't plan for either. So that's why um, Angela has created this really neat way of looking at pain and how you can control it. Actually, one of her students who is a nurse created this really neat like race car type uh, way of looking at how pain or the uterus sends messages to your brain when it comes to pain. All right, so Angela, set me up here. What, uh, what have you got here and what does this all mean? So this is just a great way of explaining how different pain control methods work. So unless you have messages traveling up your spinal cord to the brain, you I don't have any pain. So one of the more popular methods that most women know about is the epidural. And the cool thing with an epidural is a needle is put into your back, into the epidural space. And what it essentially does is it stops the pain messages from going to the brain. So without them going to the brain, you feel no pain. So in an ideal world, it works every time. It doesn't work every time. Sometimes uh, it's too early for us to put the epidural in. If it's given too early, it can slow labor down. Sometimes it's too late. You're too close to pushing, and we don't like to put it in towards the end either. Right. So it's good to know what your other options are. There are other medications you can take. So um, narcotics that are given through an intravenous. So morphine and fentanyl are the ones we tend to use. What they do is they change the way the pain message is interpreted in the brain. So it says, I feel pain, but I don't care. Exactly. So it doesn't really take it away like the way an epidural does. Nitrous oxide, most people know it as laughing gas, is also used during pregnancy and delivery. And the way it works is you inhale it. It works very quickly. And it changes, again, how the brain interprets the message. So... There you go. I feel something, but it is not pain. It's funny. Um, the great thing with those things is they are in and out of your system. However, some of it does get to the baby. So a really natural method, which is not really a medication, it is just sterile water. It's injected into four spots into the woman's back. And it's done with a tiny, tiny little needle. Women will describe it like a little bee sting. And what it does is it floods the brain with messages so that the pain messages can't get through. And that's how sterile water injections work. They're really effective. They last for about an hour and a half. And they work much like things like hot and cold work. So if you burn your finger and you run it under cold water, it takes the pain away. So it's the mm. same idea. Your brain gets flooded with those messages of cold, and so you don't feel pain the same way. And a lot of natural childbirth methods work that way. They change the way our brain interprets pain. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Angela. If that didn't help you, then I don't know what will. So those are some options for pain control. Now we need to talk to the women that really know what's going on. First of all, we got Marnie. She is seven months pregnant. So congratulations, Marnie. Thank you. And tell me a bit about your pregnancy. How has pregnancy been for you so far? It's been pretty great and I feel pretty normal the whole time. Well, that's amazing. That's good. So there you go. Ladies at home that are uh, thinking about having a baby, that's a, that's a great story. And what about there has to be something that hasn't been so great? Well, I'm pretty congested, so my husband sleeps with earplugs because oh. I snore so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, man. I'm glad that you shared that with us on live TV. Cool. Well, thanks, Marnie. Best of luck. Seven months. A couple more to go. Jules, you're in about the same boat, so seven-month mark. Yeah. So how has pregnancy been for you? Uh, the first three months were really tough, but it's starting to get a little better, and I'm starting to feel back to my normal self. Oh, good. So three months, not so bad. Morning sickness? Yeah, I had to pull over to throw up a couple times. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. But now, things are good? Yeah. And when's baby due? July 1st. And are, do you know the sex of the baby? Yes, it's a boy. There you go. So that just goes to show, congratulations, Jules, yeah. that um, for every baby, for every mom and every person out there, birth can be a little bit different, as well as those morning sickness symptoms and things like that. So we still got lots more to come on BT with bringing your newborn back home. Stay tuned. Rolling with my baby, I'll keep her. Rolling with my baby, I'll keep her. Rolling with my baby. Cause she's sweet that way We went out to a movie